My name is Ellie Freimeyer, and I'm here to talk to you today about my thesis topic, Me Too. Specifically, an exploration of tweets using cluster analysis. So I'm going to take you back to January of 2017, uh, when something really awful happened in the United States. You probably heard about it. Um, we got a new president. Um, if you haven't heard about it, don't look it up. It's not looking great. Um, on his inauguration day, uh, there was a really powerful movement in Washington, D.C., the single largest political demonstration on record, and I'm talking about the Women's March. This image is from that march. Um, and although we can you know, feel the anger and see the, the words on the signs and count the number of protesters, uh, it's hard to understand personal experiences in this format. The official purpose of this march was to advocate for women's rights against our current United States administration. But what are these stories that they're talking about, and who are these people? I wanted to know more. Cut to October of the same year, and a famous actress named Alyssa Milano tweeted this image of the Me Too idea from a woman named Tarana Burke. She said, if all the women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote Me Too as a status, we might give people a sense of the magnitude of the problem. And here's this idea of magnitude. Yes, uh, thousands of people replied, responded, and retweeted her initial tweet, and millions more used the hashtag Me Too. But who are these people? What are their stories? I wanted to know, what are people really saying when they use the hashtag me too. And before I talk to you about how I tried to answer this question, um, I want to introduce you to my fabulous best friends. Look at that. Um, they're going to kill me for using that photo. I didn't realize it would be quite so large. But um, these are my best friends. Uh, we've been friends for uh, at least 10 years, some of us over 20 years. And as six smart and talented, ambitious young women, we've had our fair share of experiences. We deal with a lot of mansplaining. Um, one of us almost lost a job uh, for speaking out against sexism. More than one of us has been stalked. And more than one of us has been sexually harassed. We are not the exception to the rule. We are just a few of the faces of the Me Too movement. And because I know our stories, their stories, so intimately, I understand that these experiences are real and lasting for that person. That a Me Too tweet sticks with you forever. So I wanted to know more about these tweets. And I went straight to the source. Using a Python library, I scraped nearly 1.4 million tweets from the advanced search page the sixth month period after Alyssa Milano's first tweet. And the beauty of a digitally native social movement is that all of the data is there the tweets from the most popular celebrities to those with very few followers. 1.4 million tweets. That's a lot. <laughs> so to start, I just created a timeline to see what I was working with. The most tweets were the day after Alyssa Milano's first tweet, and that makes sense. There was another spike when Time Magazine named the Silence Breakers their Person of the Year on December 5th. Another spike at the Golden Globes on January 7th, when the Time's Up movement was announced. And lastly, for the Oscars on March 4th. So how do I begin to analyze the content of these tweets, now that I see they have a natural movement with the uh, Me Too movement? Well, I turn to an unbiased solution called unsupervised machine learning, specifically a process called k-means clustering. This is a process of identifying groups within the data Let's say that one tweet is one circle here. And sorry to bring him up again, but let's say if in that tweet you use the words uh, Trump and Republican, it was likely to be grouped with other tweets that use words like Clinton and Democrat. And the important thing to know is that the algorithm did not know these are political tweets, but based on the words within, it knew that they belonged together. And after analyzing the 1.4 million tweets and 26 million unique words, uh, the result was 425 clusters, 425 groups that belong together. And after some qualitative analysis on top of this 425, I determined that there's five major themes of conversation in this data set. The first theme, politics. It's important. Um, 
<laughs> the, the tweets included both sides of the aisle, both from supporters and critics of the current administration. And although Me Too was born in the experiences of Hollywood, the effect reverberated. Common words in this cluster include vote, Democrat, and president. Next, workplace-based tweets. Now, I think a core tenet of the movement is the abuse of power. And these tweets included both stories about abuse in the workplace, but also conversations about how the workplace was changing. Common words here include work and workplace, power and abuse. Another theme, angry clusters. Now, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that online activity includes a lot of profanity these days. Um, and this was really interesting because the algorithm picked up a tone. This was anger from both supporters and critics. Common words were the F word, uh, Twitter, and disgusting. And it's funny because I'm smiling because they were making fun of me for saying the F word. I'm not just saying the F word, but maybe that's an American thing. My mom would kill me, so I can't. <laughs> The next theme uh, are conversation-based clusters. And these were really exciting for me. This movement has encouraged conversation and inspired stories and ignited change. Top words in these clusters include conversation, story, and help. Lastly, uplifting clusters. These were commending the brave men and women for coming forward and sharing their stories and thanking them. Common words here include conversation, together, and voices. So maybe uh, you are surprised by this, or maybe you anticipated this result. Maybe you've had political conversations as a result of the Me Too movement. Maybe you've experienced your own workplace changing its norms. Maybe you've been angry over a story you've heard or had a conversation about what happened to you for the first time, or just felt inspired by everything that was going on. But I think the most important thing to note here is that there's so much more than just the magnitude of this problem. A tweet is not just a number. One of the most popular tweets in the uplifting cluster was this from Alyssa Milano, where she says, one tweet has brought together 1.7 million voices from 85 countries. Standing side by side together, our movement will only grow. And she's not wrong. In this tweet, she counts the voices but I want to make sure they are heard. To accumulate these findings, I've created an interactive data visualization where you can explore these tweets yourself. It uses a lot of the same imagery and themes that I've discussed today. And the most important component of this was that you actually get to read those tweets and the story is not lost. And to me, this movement is not done and never will be done. Not only is the Me Too movement continuing to grow and expand with new allegations and stories, but our ability to understand digitally native social movements is growing every day. I will continue to not only understand the pulse of our changing environment, but to communicate it beautifully. Thank you. <laughs>